talking at the very end, I'll ask for questions. If you have a quick question, like where did you get that number from, that's fine. But let's try to kind of move through this. All right. So in a titration, we're trying to find the amount of analyte. As Anthony told us, that's the whole point of this. Okay. So our question is, what is the concentration of 20 milliliters of H2SO4? And then we have a graph. Okay. Concentration is the same thing as molarity. Apparently some people were confused on that yesterday. Concentration, molarity, same thing. What I'm given here to start with is some information about my analyte. I first know that my analyte is an acid. It's H2SO4. Okay. I'm also told from the problem that I have 20 milliliters of analyte. And the whole point of this problem is I'm trying to solve for the molarity of analyte. Oh. <laughs> That is given in the prompt of this question. Okay. First set of givens. Now, when it comes to information about my titrants, that's when I need to look at the graph for information. So there's two things about the titrant I'm going to pull out here. One, in the label of the graph on the axes, it's going to tell me the concentration or molarity of titrant, which is 0.2. The second piece of information I'm going to get from that graph is the amount of titrant needed to reach the equivalence point. So what I do is the equivalence point is at the steepest part of the curve, usually around a pH of 7. I look at the number of milliliters and I draw a line down, it's approximately 10. So the equivalent, equivalence point is reached when 10 milliliters of titrant is added. Okay. I'm doing it by color so you can see where I'm getting this particular set of information from. So all my information about my analyte is going to be given in a prompt. All my information about my titrant is going to be given in the graph. The toughest thing to pull out from this is the equivalence point, is to remind yourself that the equivalence point tells us how much titrant you need. Okay. Now, as we do more problems, I'm going to ask you to actually predict and balance the equation, but for this one today, I've done this one to start with for you. We have our reaction, which is reacting our analyte with our titrant, okay, giving us water and Na2SO4. And to balance it out, it's a 1, 2, 1, 1 reaction. Oh, wait. No, it's a 1, 2, ah. 2, 1 reaction. Okay? Now, yesterday, I broke down step 2 into two different parts, and that was confusing to people, so I'm going to adjust it. We're going to kind of lump it all together so it looks similar to a stoichiometry problem we've seen before. Okay? We're taking liters of titrant and we're going to go to moles of analyte. Okay, this is a problem similar to what you guys have seen. When you start in liters, you first use molarity to get to moles, and then once you have moles of one compound and we're switching to another, we have to cross the bridge using mole to mole ratio. So what we have here is a two-step conversion process. Okay, first thing we're starting is with liters of titrant. Next thing we start with then to use is molarity. And finally, the last thing we use is a mole to mole ratio. Okay? So if I'm looking for liters of titrant, I start with 10 milliliters of NaOH. Okay? I can't use milliliters, so I have to convert that. I divide 10 by 1,000, which gives me 0 0.010 liters of NaOH. Okay, so I'm going to put that in here as my value. 0 0.01 liters of NaOH. Okay. If I want to go from liters to moles, the next thing I need to use is molarity, which is also given in my problem. Okay, the molarity is 0 0.2 M, which I know stands for 0 0.2 moles per liter. 
So I have moles of NaOH up top, liters of NaOH on the bottom, and since it's 0.2 moles per liter, I'm going to put 0.2 next to moles and one next one before. Okay? So now I have my moles of analyte. If I want to solve for molarity, I know it's moles of analyte over liters of analyte. I take what I just calculated, I plug it in, moles of analyte over my liters of analyte, which I had in the beginning. So I take that 20 milliliters divided by 1,000, which gives me 0 0.020 liters. <clears throat> And that should give me 0 0.05 molar. And I've successfully solved for the molarity of my analyte. 